<laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere. Charles Cormier, uh, <laughs> the cold email man uh, from Montreal via Mexico. So welcome to yeah. the sales podcast. How the heck are you? Thank you, Wes. I'm good. Glad to be here. You know, you're, um, this is interesting timing. I spent this morning setting up a trial on a cold email platform. Yep. Um, I've never really done cold email and then to really? get, then to run across it twice in a week, it was like, all right, maybe God, the universe, I don't know, Jupiter wants me to look at cold email. <laughs> or common sense, or why. Uh, so what was the the platform you were looking at? <clears throat> uh, it's called Automailer. Okay, didn't hear about that one. Like here we use Apollo and yeah, we preach it. Um, yeah, and obviously we have a referral link, but we've been using it for like uh, two to three years and it's the most scalable uh, platform out there. Uh, well, I will check them out. So, uh, please send me your link. Yep. Um, uh, we'll it was, um, it was, it was difficult setting up and, and only because like they, they want you to create a couple of new domains because like, you yeah. don't want to use your main domain. Yeah. And, uh, uh they just, uh, their, their support, but they, they were trying to help, but man, it's just, I get I get hung up on DNS and SMTP and all that. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And they were just, you know, the friendly guy, but you know, they used Ring Central <laughs> for the <laughs> meetings and it didn't twice, oh, no. twice I couldn't log in. So I'm I open up a ticket. Oh, well, we'll use Teams. So I so I set up their teams, mm. it wouldn't share my screen. I'm like, can we just use Zoom? Like, why is this so yeah. difficult? Yeah, uh, yeah. So just yeah. little things like that. I, you seem like it, you think oh, it's not a big deal, but it's a big deal. Like I'm busy and two meetings in a row they couldn't make. So I had to set up a third, which then, you know, it throws off two days for me. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get this going because I want to help a client use mm. this. Mm. Um, but um, so why, why is cold email good? Because I, I, I was talking to another company last week about this that does it for you. You know, they want $1,400 a month mm. to get going and mm. they want a six month agreement, but they'll, they'll, ref, they'll let you cancel if they don't have a good ROI after three months. Okay. Um, huh. and, kind of a good just, offer. What's that? Kind of a good offer. Um, for example, I charge uh, 1500 and 4k for three months. Right. And and then, yeah, I understand your experience with the, the SaaS company. Like if they can't get it right, if they can't get meetings right, how will they get cold email right? Which is not rocket science, but it is somewhat difficult. The other thing that I heard you say there with um, AutoMail, I'm checking them out, by the way, as of now. Um, a lot of cold email uh, SaaS and companies they will be about, yeah, setting up the mailbox and so forth. Apollo is not that different. So that's why I help a bunch of clients uh, setting that up and reduce the headaches and create momentum. But you don't necessarily need to warm up all of these mailbox. That's important. A bunch of folks, they they always want to, you know, like create these new uh, Google Workspace mailbox and start sending emails from there. Here, we don't do that because we connect it with uh, SendGrid, which you probably know. And SendGrid allows uh, to send at scale, right? There's a shared IP. And I mean, don't send bullshit from the start, you know, because you'll you'll get in the spam. But SendGrid kind of shortcuts all of that. And why cold email? The answer is pretty simple. It's ROI and scale. Uh, so starting with ROI, me, I've owned various agencies over the year. I've owned call centers. Um, I've owned Facebook ads agencies and LinkedIn outreach agencies. And with LinkedIn, you know, there, uh, there was a time where you could connect with 300 connections per day. And th those were the good times that that's why I would make a boatload of money with LinkedIn as an agency. But from one day to the next, I don't know if you remember that I remind, remember it precisely. That was in 2020 and they started limiting connections to like 30 or 50 per day. And I was like, yeah, it's time to change. Uh, it's, time, it's time to try something different at least. So I started um, trying cold email with no expectations. I was like, okay, this, this is going to send maybe like 100, 200 emails per day. And then everything's going to break and everything's going to crash. And surely it did. 
uh, that's before I discovered like that I could scale it with uh, softwares like SendGrid and so forth. Get open rates always north of sixty percent. Spam reports rate as high as zero point zero one percent, and that I could send ten to hundred thousand emails per month. Um, and yeah, I want to talk about uh, scale. I, I don't want to monopolize the the mic like Tony Robbins does when he's on a podcast. But <laughs> <laughs> the ROI is just through the roof, right? I must be paying probably three hundred bucks, if not five hundred. Um, for the softwares that I use personally for my agency. And we generate 200 meetings per month as of now with a closing rate of approximately 10 to 30%, depending on, on when we are talking. Uh, can you do that with cold calls? Not really. Can you do that with LinkedIn outreach with uh, limited connections per day? Not really, although I still use it, obviously, because LinkedIn's a gold mine for other reasons. But from an ROI perspective, it's just humongous. Now, like there's a bunch of ways you can mess up. I guess that's what we're gonna talk about uh, today because most people don't do cold email right. And that's where the ROI gets uh, not so interesting for them. Yeah. Uh, well, where do you get your lists? Apollo has lists inside the software. So they take their data off uh, LinkedIn and uh, that's 10,000 contacts per month that they offer from a pricing uh, of around 80 USD plus per month, 10,000 contacts for 80 USD. That's that's huge. Plus they're sending on the same platform, right? So it's the holy grail, basically. You get the contacts, you get the sending, you get everything in one platform. That's why I like him. And then do they have the native SendGrid or do you have to create your own SendGrid account? You have and to connect create it? it. Yeah, you have to create... Um, it like by yourself and some people it causes them big headaches and yes there's still a technical part which is why my company helps with that but yeah you need to create it apart sendgrid is like 20 usd a month um for 50k emails plus uh basic oh, nice. plan yeah so it's still very very cheap yeah <clears throat> yeah sendgrid starts at 20 dollars a month for for how many let me see yep 10, 15, 20. Wow. Yeah. 30. Yeah, it's super cheap. So, wow. Yeah, all the way up to 50,000 emails a month. Yeah. That's the scale aspect I'm talking about, right? Because say that, yeah, you can target 10,000 contacts, 50K emails a month, and you want to contact more. Well, all you have to do is spend more on Apollo and on SendGrid. And then you you can scale to however meeting sounds good to you on, on a monthly basis, whether that's 200, 300, 1,000 meetings per month and build a full-on pledge uh, SDR team right there. So if it's that simple, why aren't more people? It seems like they'd be abusing SendGrid and then SendGrid wouldn't work anymore. Um, people don't, well, if you send crappy emails to people that you did not do your due deal, you will get in the spam regardless. You'll get kicked out of SendGrid. You'll get kicked out of Apollo. Um, copy is super important. So like not sending an offer that is not good to someone that is uh, broad and that you didn't target. Me, I'm obsessed with product market fit. Uh, that's like my obsession, creating a bunch of offers, targeting a bunch of niche and seeing what is crisscrossing. Where's the product market fit in between? That's why scale is important. That's why sending a specific amount of emails per month is important to get uh, scientific relevance, statistical relevance in these numbers and double down on what works and eliminate um, what doesn't work. Uh, so yeah, spammers get the spammer treatment, right? But people that do their work well, that craft beautiful and relevant emails uh, get rewarded for that. And why people don't do these things first they don't know so today i'm providing the education the knowledge second uh humans they have what's called motivation and there's very few that are willing to to do the technical setup and get the initial momentum because even if we get your campaign started let's say you might not see results up until sometimes and you need to be a believer you need to have results for you to want to scale me, I've been doing it for the past two to three years. Uh, motivation is somewhat an easy thing for me. And even sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, 
I, I don't really want to do it today, for example. So that's why I offered that service for people to get them started, literally do the copy, the targeting for them uh, and, or just be their coach, you know, and do the setup for them and uh, ask them, Hey, did you do your campaigns this week? Did you do that copy? Did you do that list? Do you have uh, offer ideas that you can pitch me? Do you have niches ideas that we can talk about and launch as more campaign as possible? I'm launching every day, at least five new campaigns. So imagine how that stacks, your, how many campaigns. For yourself I must be or, yeah, for or myself, clients? Just for myself. I'm not even talking about ops, you know? So like literally. So what do you mean five new campaigns? Or like yeah. new products or just a spin on what you're, you're doing? So either a product or a niche, right? So um, for example, um, and e even if we go deeper in the product, it could be the offer. So it could be done for you cold email, but with this pricing. It could be done for you cold email, but with this feature. So lots of offers to test to one uh, same niche if you want to do scientific tests and A-B test properly, which is also a feature on Apollo. And um, also different niches, right? So this year, is it Web3? Is it uh, content agencies? Is it TikTok agencies that are hot? So I like testing both. So you can imagine the number of tests that I have um, going. And once I hit the jackpot, say that one campaign, I send a hundred emails and I get like seven meetings in reply, then I just double down on it. So that's my technique. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so, man, I'm just trying to think how you chop that up. Because um, you're, I mean, obviously you're not sending it yeah, it's a lot of split testing, right? I mean, if you get, if you get what, 10,000 contacts a month. So if you had five, but even that, I mean, are you mailing them every day? Your list? Yeah. So these, the campaigns, they're sequence, right? So at least three emails, at least three days of separation between each email. So the complexity is huge because on top of that, there's, limits per mailbox right i don't want to send more than 400 emails per mailbox per day so it gets pretty complicated especially when all of these campaigns stack up which is why people again hire us because it's it can be very uh headache prone and you know only scratch the surface because you need to acquire multiple domain names um for different campaigns different brandings and so forth but in the end, it is this beautiful thing. It is this beautiful system that allows you to know like what works and what doesn't work. And to be frank, it's not that complicated. You know, it's different campaigns with different titles, product, niche, product, niche. And you have humans, um, and we're looking more and more for bots that adds contacts to these campaigns, right? Um, so yes, it can be complex. And the question is, do you want to do that as the CEO of your business or do you want to spend time closing? You know, me mm -hmm. as the CEO of, of this, this business, I do both because I feel that if I don't do it myself, I'll be away from my product. And if I'm away from my product, then I might not be innovating as much, which is another big role in my business. And I might not be taking care as much of my clients in ops, although I, I outsource my ops. Um, the going gets pretty hard when you get like 10 sales meetings per day to, to still add up uh, contacts to these campaigns, which is why, yes, I also have helps help with right. uh, SDR little helpers. Yeah. Um, what is the call to action that you found that works to, to click to have a meeting? Are you sending them to a landing page, you know, a video sales letter? Yeah. For, um, so links we try to avoid, especially in the first email. The call to action is generally like, hey, do you have time on uh, Tuesday or, or Thursday, for example? And there's a function that when I send, let's say that it's Monday, it will do like plus two days so that it will tell them like, hey, do you have time on Wednesday p.m.? And same if I send them on Tuesday, it will say um, Thursday p.m. as a call to action. 
then people reply. We want to get these replies, reply, 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 right? So you don't necessarily want to send a link in there as well. And it's kind of, some people find it even offensive, you know, that like yeah, you send them a link and you try to automatize them, like if they were just a dollar sign. So we are aiming for the reply. Once they reply, then it becomes super personalized, okay? So me, I don't do heavy personalization in first send and nor do the best agencies out there. You know, when people talk about super personalization, they don't really know what they're talking about. Um, here we do like light personalization, first name, company, um, title, industry, and so forth. And when we get replies, then we we search them super deep and reply them with something that is a no-brainer for them to book a meeting with us. So something super precise, like, hey, wow, saw that your business uh, did 15 million this year and that John is part of your SDR team and that he might not be doing so well because of X reason. Um, although that's not the best example, you want to stay positive. And then you send a link, right? Like, hey, I, I have time, this, 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 and that. Here's my link. Let's link up this week. So that's usually the call to action I go for. Yeah, cool. Um, and... Like what's a typical business or industry that this works for? I mean, are, are there any that it doesn't work for? B2C, I don't do. Um, like, you know, I, I, I used to work with uh, realtors and mortgage brokers, financial advisors back in the days. These are very much B2C. I don't do that. Um, I stay away from B2C. All the money's in B2B anyways. Uh, not to talk about ethics and the reactions you get from consumers. So that yeah. most of the time it that falls in the spam category. Uh, I don't do that. So yeah, these niches I stay away from, um, but I do a lot of agencies. So like 80% of my clientele are agencies, whether we're talking about marketing, software, recruitment. I do a lot of SaaS too, uh, but SaaS is taking a big hit this year. So I'm not straying away from it, but yet like I have less uh, tech slash SaaS client, unfortunately, this year, this market is really irrational because tech is pretty much a solution to everything. So yeah, but consumers don't reflect that. So if you're a hedge fund out there, I'd invest in tech companies right now. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, this tends to work very well for them, but yeah, it's all about the offer, right? So and an offer is, do you have competition? Um, is, do you have product market founder fit? Meaning that you have huge experience in what you do. Is it your Ikigai uh, you're offering? So what you love doing, what the world needs and uh, what the, the world can pay for. Um, so these are the types of offers that I'm looking at, but I get a variety of clients. Uh, today, for example, I had VR, um, company that are doing a Kickstarter campaign. I had a Swiss air filtration company, uh, uh, IOT hardware device. So I try to attack new ish segments, but also old sectors like manufacturing. And a lot of my campaigns nowadays, they are to help companies to attack new markets. So for example, a Canadian company that wants to do business in the U S or an Australian company that wants to go in the Asian market. So because I, my background is international business, um, so I tend to, to have like very good fit and results for these types of clients. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that marketing agencies come to you to help them find <laughs> clients. You would think a marketing agency would know how to get clients. <laughs> yeah, um, I used to have the same thoughts, you know, but... We're, we're, we're very biased as humans. We always think that the guy is better. For example, showing to this podcast, you know, like I, I had these uh, subconscious voices. Oh, what if we have this impo imposter syndrome all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Elon Musk is so much more different than I am. And by the way, it's like, yeah, he obviously is. Uh, theoretically, he's 6,700 times better than I am at business from a network perspective. Um but yeah, the reality is much, much more different. So I would tell the listeners to, you know, like stop listening to that voice and, and try things, you know, me, I mastermind with my competitors. So I, I talk with 
other cold email agencies and marketing agencies depends on what's part of the funnel they are but even lead gen agencies i can tell you that i'd be valuable to at least 95 percent of them um mm -hmm. with with this cold uh email thing because they're specialized in like facebook ads and so forth so yeah and it might work what they're doing uh for some clients specifically but for themselves and generating leads for themselves yeah cold email if it's b2b like i'm their their guy you know while this lead gen agency that might serve realtors and i cannot help them serve realtors yeah gotcha life is um, full of exceptions basically is what i'm saying yeah so so who should reach out to you agencies <laughs> anybody else <laughs> Uh, well, Texas, um, the, the bottom line, you know, is if you have a cool offer and you're in B2B, we need to talk and that, that offer, yeah, it means that you have experience in there. Competition is low. Demand is high. Um, what else does it mean it's, that it's high ticket, right? I cannot serve you if your offer is like hundred bucks a month. Um, but I can serve you if it's a hundred thousand a month or ten thousand even. You need to have a nice LTV. You need to have nice retention also with your clients, meaning that they are satisfied with your product. So, if you have that, we need to speak. Or at least if you have ideas of product that you can deploy and, and potentially get a fit, and I agree with those, then yeah, we could be a good fit. But you need to have something that's interesting out there and uh, once you have that uh, i just promote you to specific people specific niches and you get a bunch of meetings and a bunch of money and then we we laugh and we're happy and we we dance <laughs> something like that <laughs> all right well you've got a meeting coming up your website is topleads.agency right yeah topleads.agency Charles Cormier on LinkedIn, C-O-R-M-I-E-R, -E or S-D-R as a service, separated mm -hmm. by hyphens, S-D-R as a service. And yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for having me today. All right. Yeah, see on your website here. Book a meeting. Super simple. Yep. Well, cool. Uh, as you're flying back to Canada from Mexico, you know, just, just stop in Southern California. Come see me. Yeah. Well, I mean, just, you'll teach me a couple of... Uh, <laughs> arm bars and chokes and yeah it's like we, we need to roll all right come on man well, it's, it's, good more, to see you. it's more you re rolling with my body that's more like it. <laughs> hey i'm I, i'm gentle <laughs> <laughs> good to know good to know uh i don't want another tendonitis or yeah, uh, another yeah, injury for, for sure all right man charles cormier thanks for coming on the show man it's been great thank you Bye-bye.